Hey, thanks to Marco. Nick Henderson here, program coordinator for Music Forward. And I'm super excited to facilitate today's artist development workshop. We are unpacking songwriting, going into the depths of our hearts and soul to study the art of vulnerability and intention. Before we dive into today's topic and discussion, we must set a couple ground rules. Uh, we just ask that you all be supportive of one another, just know that this is a no judgment zone. And if you happen to disagree with something or someone, just do respectfully, but we never have issues with that. So I'm not even concerned. At the end of this workshop, we anticipate that you will have the capacity to access your unique experiences and learn how to apply them to your songwriting. You will also understand the importance of creating with intention and how that impacts the songwriting process. Now, as always, Music Forward always connects you all with incredible industry experts, and I am so excited to be joined by an incomparable industry professional. She happens to be Music Forward's very own, but she also is a mega hit writer. She's written for artists such as J. Cole, Alicia Keys, and also she's written a quite, a, quite a few hits for herself as well. I'm super excited to be joined by the one and only Melanie Smith, aka Polly A. Melanie, feel free to turn on, there you go, there she is. Melanie, First of all, thank you so much for being here and being a part of this. I'm so excited um, just to dive into this conversation with you. But how are you doing today? I'm doing great. And likewise, I'm super excited to, to dive into this as well. Um, yeah. All right. Well, let's do it. You know, I think that we should, you know, get some people involved. This is an interactive workshop. Um, so, so what do you say? Before we get into that, um, I would love to get a volunteer. Yeah. But I want to just break down what you know, we're really gonna be dissecting today. Um, for me, the beginning of the songwriting process starts right here. It's about getting and tapping into that, that side of you, that in, inward side of you. Um, and it can start in, in, a, simple, in a simple way, uh, such as, you know, getting the vibe right in the session, getting the vibe right where you are creating, you know, lighting a candle if you like that creating a vibe of lights or whatever or, or posters that you like that inspire you or playing a movie in the background that inspires you because it is about tapping into what gets you in your vulnerable space what gets you in in that 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 space with yourself um so yeah looking forward and like you said i'd love to have a volunteer uh help me as we as we unpack this and, and walk through this oh out the gate <laughs> <laughs> Tandria, hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How about y'all? I'm okay, great. Okay. Thank you for volunteering. Um, I, I say we dive into this. Melanie, what do you have for us? Like, I know that you you are the guru. <laughs> you are the guru. Um, yeah, well, yeah, we can just go straight to the first slide if that's cool. Absolutely. Um yeah, so identify your last emotion that felt overwhelming. Uh, joy, anger, bliss, happiness. Um, essentially, what I what I like to do, what I, what I, what I'm gathering from this piece is, it's about urgency. You know, songwriting a lot of times is about writing about what feels most impactful to you in that moment because a lot of times that rawness will help to catalyze, um, you know, an emotion that can that can heal and 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 connect with other people. It starts with you being in that vulnerable space and and peeling away from that space of vulnerability and a lot of times it has to do with like oh my god yesterday this person made me so mad or oh my god yesterday this person made me feel so loved or oh my god this person yesterday made me feel so confused or oh my god yesterday i was by the ocean and wow i was so moved like anything that makes you feel like wow i have to tell somebody about this that's a, a good place to start when writing a song so uh, Tandria, you're an artist, I'm assuming. What's your artist's name? My artist's name is T Starvers. Okay, and tell us a little bit about what kind of music you make just before we dive into this. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm a hip-hop artist, so, you know, I rap. I do some little rhymes here and there. Okay. Um, and, yeah, I like making music based on whatever I'm feeling. Um, but, yeah, pretty positive, happy, dope. <laughs> Good. Okay, so we've been. I'm feeling we're gonna get some positive vibes from you. What What is the most urgent feeling you've had in maybe in the past couple of days that you want to share with us? Hmm. 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 Excited, I will say. Um, okay. Because 
because I've been working on a lot of different things. And so okay. I'm just really okay. excited for it to come out. Um, but also, I'm going to throw in there because with that excitement, because I'm working on so much, uh, a, a little tired, a little stressed. <laughs> mm-hmm. So let's let's add that in there too. Boom. Okay, we we should get a whiteboard up here. Is that okay, let's let's do that. Let's do, it. Start, let's do the thing. Uh, let's start to gather some of these words because sure a lot is. of these words that you, that we just throw out as if it's just it's us. It's it's what everybody's going through, right? right. So we can just from jump um, start to begin to write down a couple words that can lead to phrases that will then lead to a, a stanza or two, <laughs> a yeah. melody, a lyric. And and eventually an entire an entire song. So she said, um, "Excited, I'm so excited." Hey, they already wrote that song, but I'm sure their session started similar to this. <laughs> um, I'm excited, but then you said you said a couple different things. I'm excited. Um, did you say overwhelmed or no? You said overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. Right. Okay. So yeah, so a good place to start is really just with a brain vomit, um, for lack of a better phrase. You know, don't think about um, making it poetic yet or making it, you know, anything. It's really just about getting out your feeling and then from there, finding the universality of it and then coloring it with, with poetry. You know, maybe instead of excited, we say elated. Maybe instead of overwhelmed, we say we, we show an image of what that means. I, I feel like there there are you know clouds weighing me down. You know we could we could use imagery and say it a different way that might make for you know like a bar and a song or whatever. Mm-hmm. Stressed. You know we could start there, but then turn that into um, you know running, 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 and I, I I feel like I can't stop. But you know whatever we could play with it, right? But the point is to just lay down what we're feeling first. So, and then, I'm sorry. So essentially what you're saying is you, you know, you have this foundation and you just kind of unpack Mm -hmm. the foundation of what you have. So when you say peel that away, are you essentially saying like, you have to go deeper into your, your vulnerabilities, deeper into, you know, your mind. Is that, you know, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Deeper into, you know, that feeling, whatever made you blurt that out on, you know, let's talk about it. I was walking to class and I felt like this because a lot of times when you just tell the story, a lot of those will work as the lyrics in the song you're going to find. Because a lot of time when you just tell the story, you're adding your own language, your own colloquialisms, your own uniqueness, because how you speak is not going to be how this person speaks or how that person speaks. And that's going to add the individuality of you. So it's really a, a couple of things. It's, it's just getting to the core of what that emotion is mm. so that by doing so, we're going to have a lot of words to play with. Okay. So let's go to the step two. You want, can we go back to the presentation? Absolutely. Cool. Melanie, you're dropping gems. I, <laughs> yes. Had I known that you were coming like this, I would have gotten my note cards ready. <laughs> it's not too late. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So step two. Now, says write down 10 words or phrases that describe your emotions during that period. So again, just kind of taking that foundation and just peeling away at that. So So let's get to the whiteboard. Let's have T-Star kind of walk us through, like, let's tell the story. Um, When you, let's start with excited, because I I feel excited today too. So I kind of want to build on that first. Um, What has you feeling excited? Well, um, I have an event that's coming up on Saturday, and I'm super mm-hmm. excited to see um, the reaction of people who are coming. Okay. Um, so I feel from that, you're saying, I want to make people happy. I want to make people smile. I'm yeah. excited at the idea of what I can, how I can make people feel. So even just saying that and then just breaking down to what it is you're really excited about. Yeah. That's already lines in a song that people can relate to. I want to make people happy. I want to make, make people smile. Who doesn't want to make people happy and want to make people smile? Um, that's already relatable. So let's just start there. I want to make people happy. What, what else? What else? Um, with excited or with the next one? With excited. With excited. Let's stick with, with one hmm. for now. Um, 
I know in the moment I'll be filled around, be surrounded by people who um, is excited as well. So mm-hmm. that I'll add excitement. Um, I want to be, I want to, I want to be in the circle. I want to be in the center of the excitement. Exactly. I want to, you know, just even in what you're saying, write that first thing down, but then find five different ra- ways to say the same thing. Mm-hmm. Cause sometimes when you just keep digging at it and pressing at it, you're That's when the gold happens. Right. Um, Lear Corwin, who's one of the most amazing songwriters, uh, American songwriters that, that has ever existed in my opinion. He said that, he writes as he rewrites a song and he only starts to take the song seriously on the 10th rewrite. Mm. So just to give you some context, he wrote hallelujah for those who, you know, may not be familiar. He wrote a very uh, popular standard at this point uh, mm-hmm. called hallelujah. And um, yeah, when I read that, when I read that quote, I was like, wow, like that's deep and profound and, and I've applied it and it's true because mm. the more you chip at something, the more you start to discover all that's living underneath. So, okay, I want to be in the center of the excitement. Um, let's write one more, one more down. Hmm. Huh, huh, huh. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Um, I think it's really just about wanting to feel good, wanting to yeah, feel, wanting to be in the moment, right? Positive. Want to be, you know. I want to. I want to enjoy the moment. I want to. Mm-hmm. I want to create the moment. Um, that's good yeah okay cool that should be a good good start all right let's get back to the presentation and see what the next step would be want to be in the moment yeah you know that's so applicable to so many different facets of music and the, the creative process Melanie, I mean, you've written some hits like Crooked Smile. I can only imagine like, you know, <laughs> what what was going on in your mind at, you know, at that particular moment when you were writing that. I don't know if you care to share, but. Oh, yeah. Like- um, when I was writing Crooked Smile um, for J. Cole, you know, that that was really, I was inspired by his lyrics. So when I wrote that, I had just met him and he had the song written in uh, its entirety except for the hook. So I got to play off of those incredible lyrics that we all know and love now. Um, it was very empowering for females. So it was it aligned in every way with my being. So it was very easy to, to come up with that. But yeah, it was really about feeding off of what he was saying in his lyrics. Yeah. Um, another example, uh, when I wrote Love Is My Disease for Alicia Keys, I didn't write it for Alicia Keys initially, but it ended up being on our album. But when I wrote that song, I went into the studio and the first lines of that song are, when you're gone, it feels like my whole world's gone with you. And I literally felt that in that moment. The producer that was I was writing was like, what are you going through? And I said, I was, the, my, the person I was with at the time went away, you know, they were on tour and, I just saying what was in my heart. So sometimes, like I said, when you just say what it is, when you're gone, I f- it feels like my whole world's gone with you. Like it's simple, but it's something that so many people can relate to. And it's just, it's that visceral raw feeling that sometimes all you need is what you would say. So I know that was a very long winded like way to answer that, but. No, that was beautifully, <laughs> beautifully said. Yes. The box of tissue. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's dive into step three. So we've pinpointed quite a bit thus far. So now choose one of the words or phrases from step two as your song title or line in the song. Okay, cool. So let's go back to that whiteboard. See what we got. All right. This is good stuff. So cool. Um, I wanted to make people happy. I want to be in the center of the excitement. I want to. I want to enjoy the moment. Create the moment. I'm. I'm being uh, drawn to enjoy the moment. Create the moment. Something about those two lines are resonating with me right now. Um, we could even. It could be called a moment. You know, the song could be called a moment. Um, it could be called create your moment. Uh, create your life, create your movie. We could just play on that. Um, what do you think, T-Star? What are you, what are you vibing with? 
I really vibe with um, a moment because mm-hmm. I feel like that could really tie into if we wanted to incorporate those other words, um, really like taking a moment to breathe, taking a moment to feel everything in that mm-hmm. moment, um, and then continue to push forward with everything that you have to do. So I like the moment. So what do you think, Nick? I love a moment. Um, I feel like it's ambiguous, but then at the same time, it's very intentional. See what I did there? <laughs> ambiguous. <laughs> a moment. Create a moment. Because for me, sometimes when I just establish what the title is, it makes the rest of the song, writing the song, a bit easier because it gives me, um, what do they call it, pointing north. It gives me a direction. Uh, true north is what it is. It gives me that direction of where I want it to land. Yeah. So if I want to say, if I say create a moment, now I know the beginning, the middle, I know what each piece should sort of entail because I know what I want the audience to get from the song. I'm trying to inject in them. It's about creating your moment. It's about being in your moment. It's about taking accountability for your moment. It's about owning your moment. It's yeah. about putting it on yourself. So then it's like, oh, okay, this song sounds like, an empowerment song or you know what I mean? You can kind of put it in a, in a category and that way, you know, when you're starting where to go, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. That makes sense. Cool. 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 All right. So All right. We have pinpointed like a lot here and <laughs> we've unpacked <laughs> a lot. And I, I think that, you know, this is a good spot to go a, le- a little deeper. So Melly, why don't you take us there? Okay, cool. So I would like to know, um, T-Star, is there a song that just inspires you, that's always inspired you? And the reason I'm asking is because a lot of times, for me, I, I take a song that I love. For example, I really love the song Jealous by Labyrinth. And the first time I heard that song, it, it just spoke to me in a very, very visceral way. And, I, and I, it made me feel like I want to have this impact on someone else. I want to create a song that's going to make someone feel this way because this song actually healed me. Can I do that? Can I heal somebody? So sometimes this, the point of this, uh, this part of the process is when you're inspired by another person, you can essentially take from what, how they made you feel and apply it to your own song. So is there any song that you could think of off the top of your head? I know there's probably, thousands (laughs) thousands <laughs> but maybe one that really just has resonated with you for a long time that you could share with us yes um i'm gonna go with beyonce because why not and pretty <laughs> why not um pretty hurts because hurts. i was a pageant girl and so i resonated oh with a lot of that that she was doing hmm. do you want to know a really fun fact what's up were you, you know the, mo- the model in that video deandra oh. forrest is my sister-in-law <laughs> Anyway, she's wow. the mother of my, my babies, my, my niece and my nephew. <laughs> Shout out to DeAndre Forrest. Okay, but okay, so Pretty Hurts, and that is a very powerful song. So what, what do you think was the intention of, of that, the person who wrote that song, what was their intention in writing that song, do you think? Um, probably to highlight um, the things, the struggles that women go through. Um, to hold this standard that the society has put upon us, but then to also um, kind of like make women know and appreciate like their beauty, regardless of what the standard is. Mm. And you know what I love about that song is that it's so clear, right? Mm-hmm. You didn't even have to think. I don't know. What, the, what is that? No, you know exactly what the intention of that song is because and because they did a very good job of, of letting you know, right? right? So that's that's number one. Like you go into the song, for me, I feel like that song probably, probably sat down and may have said, you know what, I, I feel like I, women need to know this. Women need to know that they don't have to do this to their bodies in order to feel beautiful. They don't have to do. So when that person's intention is clear, this is what happens. You as a listener, not only it resonates with you, but you're, it's very crystallized in what you were supposed to be re- receiving from that song. Um, so that's the first layer of intentionality when it comes to a song. The second layer is being intentional about, um, the performance of the song, right? A lot of times there are artists who may write songs that are very high, very low. 
uh, adapt well to a live performance. You're kind Sing of, it, they don't. I'm sorry, you're kind of cutting in and out, but I think I get the gist of what you're saying as far as uh, maybe you can just pick it up from um, just when you're writing a song. Yeah, oh, when you're writing a song, sorry, my internet. Um, uh, when you're writing a song, um, the um, making sure that you're very clear about the intention of where you even want to perform it, you know, making sure that you write it in a way that you can perform it. Um, sometimes when I write a song, a lot of times I'll be thinking of singing in a stadium. I'm in Madison Square Garden, you know, does this song translate well to Madison Square Garden? Is this a, is this a stadium song or is this more of an intimate setting, you know, song? So it's good. It's, it's, it's important to stay in that mindset because the goal is that you will be performing this in very various settings. So you have to, you know, put yourself in that situation before you're there so that you can best prepare yourself to do the best job possible, right? Um, and if it's too hard for you, you're going to regret that <laughs> when you're performing it. Um, and yeah, so again, it's just about being very, uh, very, very, in very intentional about what it is you're trying to communicate, where it is you're trying to perform this, um, things like that. You Does know, that make so sense? Melody, so you kind of have best of both worlds here. You are an artist and you're a songwriter as well. So obviously you write your own music, but you written for people, as you, you know, mentioned Alicia Keys, J. Cole. And, you know, we just got done discussing Pretty Hurts, which was actually written by Sia. So Sia, she's known mm -hmm. for, you know, writing these very empowering songs. So mm -hmm. Pretty Hurts. Uh, which is Beyonce's song, her own songs, Titanium, Alive, you know, uh, Chandelier, all empowering songs that seem to be very intentional that are meant to reach a certain audience or demographic. So um, I'm just curious to know, what are some variations between writing for someone else versus writing for yourself? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I think that, you know, there, for me at least, there isn't, uh, a very clear line because as an artist and as a songwriter, my goal is always to write from a space of universality. I want whatever I'm going through. I think a part of the reason why I've, I've experienced success in the songwriting space is because of that, because I don't write just for me, like my own. Of course, I add details of my life into it, you know, like subtle details like colors and different, you know, things that give it a visual. Um, mm -hmm. But that still can be applied to anyone, right? I don't, I don't make it so specific that it's not relatable. Mm -hmm. um, my goal is, yeah, is to, you know, be very in tune and in touch with what I'm feeling, but also find a way to, because we're all feeling the same things at the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not the only person that's been heartbroken. I'm not the only person that's been in love. I'm not the only person that, you know, somebody annoyed me or I, you know, I annoyed somebody, you know, whatever, we're all going through the same things, um, no matter what. So it's really just about finding that, that universal theme within your own, uh, experience, right? Whatever you're going through, making that universal. Wow. It's, it's just so amazing how a, a product of, you know, one's vulnerability and intentionality within their creative process can still be very universal because sometimes it can, seem like it's very singular like i'm feeling this and you know depending on what space you're in like nobody has ever felt the way i felt <laughs> right no one will ever understand but it's like no actually there like you said and i love that and it's a sobering thought to think like no actually there are probably millions of people who have felt the same maybe different experiences you know have unfolded but the emotion I'm sure many people can relate to that. So I think that that's such a great uh, reminder. So and, and to add to that, like, that's the beauty of music, right? Like, that's why mm -hmm. we, we get the, the, the blessing of being able to help people connect to their feelings and help people remember that they're not alone because they heard a song that spoke their life, that sung their life and, and allowed them a voice to work through you know, whatever it is that song is helping them work through, you know, and like, that's part of the reason why I love songwriting, why I love making music so much, because I think that's an art form that, you know, what other art form can you connect, can you bring together 
you know, 10,000 people and they're all on one frequency, all in one vibration, singing the same song at the same time. Like yeah. that is the most ex highest extreme version of love and connection of, in human form. So yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing, you know? I gotta give you some snaps on that. <laughs> it's true, I'm just spitting facts. <laughs> well, I think this is a great segue to step five. So okay. this is a deep dive into just who you are. So in this case, Tandria, who you are as an artist. And now you get to take a moment just to consider what makes you unique and just what are you bringing to the table, the you know musical landscape. And Melanie, feel free to elaborate on this. Um, take it away. <laughs> Oh yeah, well, this step five is really, um, you know, delving into, so the way I see the music industry, right, um, the, the artist industry landscape, right, is like there's a sea of artists and they all have something to say and everybody has a, you know, a very strong voice. I think of like a Cardi B, we're very clear on what her position is. She's very vocal. I think of like a SZA. She gives me a very clear perspective on who she is through her music, right? So it's, I kind of look at it like, okay, you have all these artists in a room and then they get the mic. What are you going to say when you get past the mic, right? Like, what's your contribution to the conversation? And that starts with reflecting on what do you, what, who you are and what are you wanting to contribute as a, as a person to the conversation, right? So it starts with reflecting on that, that person, like, you know, if you were watching a, a, this scene happening and then you got past the mic, what are people going to receive from you? And my advice to all artists is don't let somebody answer that question for you because that question will be answered inevitably, whether you answer it or not. They're going to formulate it for you. So it's very, it's very important to be intentional about what you want that answer to be. It's very, very, be very intentional about how you want to be perceived, right? Um, so yeah, Tixar, what do you think? I mean, you uh, seem like somebody who knows what's up and has a very clear perspective. So if in answering that question, what would you say to that? Like, what is your That's unique contribution? Question. And I know in my life, what's crazy is, you know, a couple of months ago, I could have been able to answer this question like that. <laughs> to 2020 and got me a little shook in my oh, boat. Oh, well, ain't that the uh, truth? Who I am, again. Um, no. Um, <laughs> no, to answer that question, I think that T-Star Verse is um, an artist who is um, going through growing pains at this very moment, um, trying to uh, rediscover who she is, what she wants to bring to the world, but definitely still a positive light. Um, someone who's not afraid to talk about what she goes through and trying to connect people together um, and someone who loves to have fun, um, but also loves to be a friend and also loves to be supportive of everybody that's around her. So that's who t Star Verse is. Well, I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. I'm definitely getting that. I'm definitely getting that from you. Um, um, but I want to peel it away a little bit more, you know, because a lot of this, it does, this sort of meshes into branding. And marketing mm -hmm. right it is about having a, a part of having a very crystallized vision of an artist has a lot to do with the consistency in messaging right mm -hmm. so what seems like um not done intentionally maybe like oh why is this artist always saying this phrase or why is this artist always speaking on this that's because they want you as the audience to, to, they know they only have a 30 second sound bite or a 15 second clip, or they know they only have you for a very small, you know, portion of time because we're all so distracted. And they know in that time period, I need to give, give you a very definitive um, version of myself, right? So that's another part of it. It's like making yourself almost larger than life, taking T Star, but then like pressing the hundred, but putting it on the max, turning it up, you know, and like, because you're going to have to package that, right? You're going to have to put that in these little sound bites of, I'm T-Star, this is me. And even though you've only seen 15 seconds of me, I know that I, my, my, my goal is to have you walk away with a very clear perspective of who, you, who I am based off of what I want you to know about myself. You know what I mean? So 
but I already know you, you're, you're good on that. I can already, <laughs> I can already tell you got that figured out, but I just, for the artists listening, that's sort of what this piece is about um, as well. Really dissecting that. Yeah. Melody, I really love that you, you know, kind of bridge the gap between, you know, the creative process and the very, you know, like, business side of you know artistry that sometimes when you're creating you're not thinking about that you're not thinking about like all right how is this going to translate you know once it's you know pushed and promoted to you know spotify apple music but um once again it, it's it you're kind of bringing this home to say like every aspect of artistry is intentional and mm -hmm. I, I really love that you know as we talk about um you know just artistry um it, it everybody has something to bring to the table. You know, sometimes yeah. it may seem like a market or a lane is oversaturated, but you know, Tangeria, you rap. And like, yes, there are, you know, a ton of hot rappers out here, but I'm sure they're, they aren't anything like you. And, you know, being confident in who you are and what you bring to the table. And that's why I love here in parentheses, it says, what are you bringing to the party? And it's like, <laughs> you know, when I think of party, I'm thinking about something that's fun, something that I voluntarily got into because I knew I was going to, you know, show up and have a good time. And I think that that's, uh, that's synonymous to how, you know, things should be approached within the creative process, within artistry and within the industry. But I think that that's a conversation for a whole another day. <laughs> <laughs> so, Melanie, first of all, you are doing a great job. Uh, this is exactly what we uh, just love and just we need in this space just to <laughs> unpack and just go deep and dive into so many sectors that we would just kind of overlook. So step six identifying the intention of the song. So in this case, Tandria, we've got, should I, shall I pull up the whiteboard again? No, not yet, not yet, because I wanna, I wanna unpack this a little bit. Okay. Because we talked about your identity as an artist, right? Um, your identity through your song, your messaging through your song, and how we align that and how we make that consistent, right? You can't come out the gate rapping about, you know, X, Y, Z, and then turn around and now you over here rapping about, it's like, who is this person? It's like, we have to find consistency throughout the messaging over all of the songs. Mm -hmm. It's not just this one song, but what, 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 how we can make that happen is identifying the intention of this song. And as long as that aligns with the intention of your entire artistry, then yeah, build on it. But if you get yourself in a situation, for example, like you're in a session, and they're like, let's write a song about something that you're totally against. You may not want to write it. Maybe it's talking about violence. Maybe it's talking about something that you're just not about, right? And it may be a hit. You may be feeling like, oh, they got a track that's heating up. It's just, if it's not aligning with your overall intention of what you want people to get from you and feel from you, it's not going to help your career. Mm -hmm. So this part is about identifying the intention of your song and under and, and asking yourself, does this align with the intention of my artistry? Um, so yeah, let's go to the whiteboard. And I think it will, because just the little bit that I'm getting from T-Star, she's all about mm -hmm. the excitement, creating her moment, um, making it happen for herself, not making excuses. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, what would you say so far we had center of, uh, I want to enjoy the moment, create the moment. So what would you say would be the intention? I think we already talked about it, but let's just kind of um, build on it for a little bit. Yeah, um, the intention behind this would probably be um, going through, let's say, a situation um, where you're like, I guess maybe like on the rise of success and on the journey of that and really just taking in every single moment of like success that you endure within your life mm -hmm. and appreciating that space, but enjoying everybody that's around you and, and being happy for yourself genuinely. Um, maybe something like that. Mm, I love that. I love that. Let's start, start writing down some lyrics. What do you think? Um, I'm, I'm seeing like, I, I want to own my moment. Mm -hmm. I want you to, to, <laughs> I want, I want you to, I want you to, to, or I want yeah. you as, I want you to do the same. Yeah. That's yeah. just simple. Yeah. I want to enjoy my moment. 
I want you to do the same. Yeah. Um, something just inside of me telling me we're all the same. You know, it could be this is just a freestyle. This is just to get it get it going. <laughs> it's telling me we're all the same. So I'm feeling from this, it's like a, you want to connect people and you want people to tap into what's happening right in front of them, um, not be chasing mm -hmm. something that's not happening, not be chasing a phantom. Ooh, that's cool. Like, don't go chase. I know don't go chasing waterfalls. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but maybe something to do with, like, you know, not being afraid to, 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 to be okay with your moment. You know right. what I mean? Like, out of the place where you are. Not yeah, like the mm -hmm. like the place where you are is the place like is is the place to be. The place where you need to be. <laughs> Period. Wait, repeat the that. place where you, <laughs> bars. Oh, go ahead, help me. The place where you are is the place you need where you need to be. The place where you are is the place where you need to be. That's like a a dope opening line to me. Yeah. You know, so as far as intention. This song, yeah, that's the intention. It's to, it's to create a space for people to be present in their moment um, and be grateful for their moment. I mm -hmm. love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. I want, I want to hear this song right now. Yes. <laughs> so, so, so take it back to the presentation. I'm sorry. What was it? I was saying, do we need to schedule a songwriting session, please? I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's do it. Um, so let's do so yeah. So... Essentially, just to sum it all up, you know, these are just some of the little hacks that I use when I'm, you could, yeah, when, these are just little hacks that I use when I'm um, in the studio and I need that little bit of, you know, d inspiration to, 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 mm -hmm. to kick something off. You know, it's about going inside. It's about, you know, tapping into who you are and, 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 and how you want to be received, right? Um, so, yeah. And I, I want you to take this T-Star as an action item. I want you to build on that song. Um, we'll send you some of what we started, but I, I'd love to meet with you again and and see where you are with it, you know, and see, and let's finish it. Because, um, and everybody watching, I hope that you take some of these steps as well and, um, you know, work, build off of it, work through it um, as well, because, hey, it's worked for me, so. Hopefully it works for you too. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Tandra, thank you so much for being our superstar volunteer. Um, so grateful for you. I really hope that you are able to create a hit song <laughs> after <laughs> this. And I'll be looking forward to it. And then you can get Melody to feature on it. <laughs> oh, please. Yes. Please. <laughs> Thanks, Mel. Give me Thank the you. honor. Yeah, that's great. Thank, Thank you. you. Melody. This is such a like masterclass that <laughs> many artists, they need this. They really need this. And, you know, it just seems like it's something that you have uh, mastered. But, you know, when you are diving into the space of vulnerability and, you know, also intentionality, how can you just remain consistent? Because obviously sometimes, you know, things just pivot in life and, Mm -hmm. Things happen. Say like 2020, we've had to adjust in so many ways. And, you know, that may affect, you know, just how we are vulnerable with ourselves and maybe with others. So um, how can you, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, can you just share with us some advice and some tips on just how to stay, you know, connected to uh, just the vulnerability that we all possess? Yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, I think for me, it's about, you know, creating and establishing rituals, daily rituals for yourself, um, whether it be working out, um, meditation, journaling. That's what I do. Journaling, meditation, uh, you know, just just, extra, you know, things that allow you to just explore within. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and just get to know yourself, be in the be in 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 the space, in a quiet space with yourself so that you can settle the noise. And listen to who, what these voices, what, who you are, what it is you're trying to, what, because your voice is so unique and, you know, you, there's only one of you. So what you have to contribute is also unique. But a lot of times we're bombarded with so much outside noise that we 
find ourselves speaking what other people are speaking because we didn't give us that 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 that's give ourselves that space to find out who Polly A is and what Polly A is is trying to say. So um, yeah, I think I think even you know during this time of of what's happening around the world, it's even more important to find that space to to, to stay grounded in who you are because. I, I do feel there's there's just a lot of you know forces pulling you to align with with what they want you to do you know so that's what I would say just tap into yourself you know absolutely Melanie Pollier <laughs> thank you both of you thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> we're both saying you're welcome <laughs> you're welcome from the both of us. <laughs> but yes, thank you so much for taking the time out to be here with us. Um, so insightful, um, so enriching. Thank you again. Um, yeah, and I'm, and I'm down to, you know, answer any questions. Um, DeMarco, I know we're, we're, we're going to do a Q&A. So yeah, it's been great. And I'm, I'm looking forward to answering some questions. All right. Well, I'm going to pass it back to DeMarco. And thank you, Melanie, so much for that um, session. I think we've got a lot of gems out of it. I was reading the chat the whole time and been engaging our audience. And we've got a lot of young songwriters, a lot of young artists um, who are eager to ask questions uh, to Polly. So I'm going to bring Polly on screen, have her unmute herself so you all have VIP access uh, to her. Polly, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Maybe, maybe not. I can hear you. I can hear you. See. You guys hear me? There? Yes, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yes, they Let's can hear me. Let's get your questions into the chat now. And I want to talk about um, just what we've learned and recap some of the gems that uh, Polly was able to drop for us. I know that a lot of you are sharing. There she is. Melanie, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I can hear you. Hi, DeMarco. You can't hear me? No, I can't hear you. I think everyone else can hear me. Hold on. We're doing some technical. They're saying they can hear me. They can hear both of you. Oh, they can hear both of us. I just can't yeah. hear you. Yeah, I'm not sure. All right. Well, Melanie, my, my, my first question for you is, first of all, thank you so much for being here with us today. It's weird that you and I talk every day and now here <laughs> I'm in a different place talking to you. <laughs> you did such a great job uh, uh, in that workshop. Thank uh, you. What are some key gems that you want sort of our, our participants to, actually, before I ask you that, a lot of questions in the chat were about just being young and writing a song and, and how do they know um, this song is something, right? So tell us about being a young, a young songwriter and what some advice you have for them. Um, I think the best advice I can give young songwriters, there's a bit of an echo, um, is really just experiment. You know, don't be afraid to write a terrible song. <laughs> it's okay. You know, the best of songwriters have written terrible songs. Um, it's not always about writing the best song ever. It's, not, it's usually just about getting it out, doing it, finding a discipline behind it, you know, give, tasking yourself with a goal. Say, I'm going to write a song a day. Or if that's too ambitious, I'm going to write a song a week. Um, it really is just about getting in those hours, getting that, those 10,000 hours under your belt because at some point it will just become just your nature. You won't even have to think about it, but it's about, it's about doing it so many times and making all the mistakes and not being afraid of making those mistakes. Great. Do you, do you remember the first song that uh, you wrote and was it, and was it a hit? Oh, it was definitely not a hit. <laughs> I was like, I mean, 14, 15 years old and, you know, at that point, you're really just mimicking what you like. Um, and looking back, it would never, no one would ever, will ever hear that song. But, you know, again, it was just about, when I, when I was that young, it was really just about fun. Like, I was just having fun. I wasn't, obviously, it wasn't a professional uh, career path at that time. It was really just about having fun. But it was probably a hit for, you know, for a 14-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> the, the uncharted territory, the, the unreleased album. Um, right. <laughs> what, 
so you talked a lot about in this workshop really about vulnerability and intention, right? And being in 2020, and I love how T-Star brought that up, being in 2020, some of us are on the struggle bus, right? And I mm -hmm. think songwriting is very subjective and it's also really about who you are as a person and being in a certain space. So with everything going on in the world, what kind of space do you create for yourself when, when you're writing a song? Because I know you used to write in the studio, now you're writing at home. So talk about that transition a little bit. Um, well, I've always had a setup at my house. So I'm, I've been used to having this like my own personal space to record. But I think the real, um, you know, the real takeaway is songwriting is really about honesty. You know, it's about, it's about, as songwriters, we're, sorry, there's a fire alarm. <laughs> we're tasked with um, storytellers, right? Being, holding up the mirror to the world, to society, to ourselves, to each other. And you can only really do that when you really find a space to be honest with yourself and with what you see is happening and, you know, recording the truth, um, whatever that may look like. Um, so no matter what you're going through, no matter if it's the, the, the times we're in or, or you know, what, whatever may be going, around, uh, uh, going on around you, it's really just important to, again, find that space to be vulnerable and honest. Yeah. Um, cause that's, that's really going to be the songs that I think resonate the most with, with others and with, with the world. Yeah. I, and I see sort of, I can, I can see on my end, a lot of our videos that are up and in our chat and I want to speak directly to you, um, or to your younger self as a young woman. And is there a different game for, for female songwriters than there are for, uh, male songwriters? Do you have to do anything that's different to get your work out there? Or do you feel like it's a level playing field? <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> it's a very loaded question. Too, yeah, though. that's so. I mean, I would just say, you know, don't even think about that. Don't even think about what the world is, you know, is on because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It really is. This is this art form is about self. It's about a self exploration. It's about a journey with self. So, you know, yeah, sometimes, you know, you women may have may have the advantage sometimes men. But again, it's it's really about cap capturing a, a feeling that defies gender, defies race, defies all of these boundaries and, and really is about bringing the universality of humans, <laughs> what we all go through. And I think that's another reason why music is so amazing is that it does, it can cross all of these barriers that society has put in front of us. Um, so, you know, when, when you, again, when you're true to you, you're you're holding up the mirror because at the end of the day we are the same and i think that's what what music tells us is like oh wow we we love this song. we love this song everyone loves this song because everyone is going through this so right. you know it doesn't matter just just have fun and, and and do your thing you know express yourself tell the world your story it matters yeah are you an artist that believes that once you put your a song and your music out there that it no longer belongs to you and that yeah. it's for interpretation Absolutely. Absolutely. These songs don't belong to you. I, I'm actually a person, I was actually asked this question before, like, how did you come up with, you know, Ghetto Gold Dream is a song that I have that a lot of people have uh, has resonated with. And honestly, it, a lot of times when I'm in the studio, it, it feels like almost a channeling. Like, I don't, I feel like I'm, I'm channeling words or channeling feelings that need to happen. I know it sounds very esoteric, but it's, it's true for me. Um, I don't feel like I'm, I'm writing it alone, so I don't feel like it belongs to me at the end of the day. Like when the song comes out and it's it, people love it. Say, for example, Crooked Smile, you know, that hook resonates with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. That That's not my hook anymore. <laughs> that's, you know, when you hear that, especially I went to a J. Cole concert and I heard the whole stadium singing that those words that I wrote. And I'm like, this doesn't belong to me anymore. This is this is for everyone now. So, yeah, definitely. Um. Didn't know that you wrote that hook, so this is very emotional for me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it offline. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, what, so, were there any um, were there any classes or were there any sort of extracurricular activities that you uh, participated in in high school or in college that sort of prepped you to be in the music industry or or a songwriter? Um, the only class that I took that was a formal class was uh, a production class in college. I did take a production class, uh, uh, just a basic intro to production, like how to, you know, set it up and record myself and all of that. But honestly, you know, it's really about becoming a student and a love of the game and just really listening to diverse types of music. You know, even if you make 
say you make you're a rapper, you know, that doesn't mean you shouldn't listen to country or rock or, you know, even gospel music or classical music. You can learn from so all of these genres that are, that exist. So become a student of the game and just really dive into learning about all different types of, of musical expression because you can you you can put you can put all of that into your music, you know. Um, yeah, that's what I would say. Like just just become a student on your own. You don't really need a a, a a structured class to to continue learning. There's so many resources out there that exist outside of this a school setting. Um, but just stay passionate and stay in a space of wanting to learn. Cool. When was the when was the moment that you knew you were a songwriter? Like this is going to be my gig for life. Was it, was it 14 when you wrote that hit or was it, was um, it another time? It wasn't until I actually, like, I always thought I was going to just be a singer. Like, I, when I what do you want to be? When you, I want to be a singer. I want to be a singer. Songwriting didn't, I didn't even know that was even, like, a job that people had until, I didn't even know that people didn't write their own music. Like, I didn't mm. know that all of these pop stars had writers and all that. You just assume when you're little, like, oh, they're, they're writing their own songs, right? Yeah. Um, it wasn't until I, I started writing my own songs and, you know, it was uh, introduced to me that, you know, these songs could actually be going, could go to Alicia Keys or could go to Natasha Bedingfield. Or, it's like, oh, okay, this is, so yeah, um, that it was kind of in the, in when I started writing for myself that, that, that I was like, oh, okay, this is another stream of income that I could pursue, explore. Can you, uh, as we wrap up here, can you tell our audience uh, about our art Music for Arts Artist Development Pathway and why they should be, join in? Absolutely. Um, the Artist Development Pathway is vital for the artist because there isn't really a space um, that has been, you know, created for artists. I'm an artist. Uh, I've had, a, you know, I've been an artist my entire career and I curate these experiences from the lens of what I would have needed when I was first starting. So, uh, again, it's coming from that space of, of, of what can I, what can I, how can I help these artists tap into what, you know, they need to tap into. And not only that, every, um, activation comes with a special guest from the industry. Um, and so I, we allow an opportunity for, for you guys to really intersect with professionals. You can really, you know, not only listen to the gems that they drop every week, but you can also follow up with them and share your music and get feed, get additional feedback, you know, and, and it really, you can also network with other artists in the chat and connect with them, possibly collaborate with them. So it's really about building this community and building these spaces, creating these spaces for you guys to intersect with pros, uh, develop skill sets in as it, as it pertains to your artistry and connect with each other. So yeah, I hope to go, I hope yeah. to see you guys it's every Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. You can sign up on our website hobmusicforward.org, and I really look forward to to meeting meeting you guys today. That you know that participated today. Yes. Well, that is our session for today. A virtual round of applause for Melanie Hollier. Both of you thanking us. We're thanking you. Uh, and it has been uh, a joy to see you in this space. And for our audience today, like Melanie said, please sign up at hobmusicforward.org. We also will be back tomorrow uh, with another presentation on our career development pathway called Digital Marketing on mm, Marketing on Digital Platforms. Um, so I hope to see you all back here tomorrow. With that said, enjoy your evenings um, and good night. <laughs> Bye, everybody.